One of the most shocking revelations given to us in the Ahsoka series thus far was the showcase that canon is finally exploring things outside of the main Star Wars lore galaxy. Originally, many of us theorized that Thrawn and Ezra had vanished into the unknown regions of wild space, but it appears that either Ezra or the Purgle were far more thorough in their choice to banish Thrawn, and they took him far away, all the way to what is known as the Pathway of Peridia. Only the Purgle, who were strong enough in the Force and had natural understanding of how to use hyperspace travel, were able to travel through this pathway to Peridia. This also now makes sense as to why everyone has been completely unable to locate Ezra and Thrawn for the past 10 years. But all of this traces back to the pathway of Peridia itself, and namely, how it actually has been known all this time by the Jedi as well as the Night Sisters. So what is this mysterious pathway? What is Peridia, and who were the extragalactic aliens that established and fortified it? Well, come with us today as we explore Jedi fairy tales and Night Sister fact and the pathway to Peridia, and prepare with us as we open up yet another holocron to uncover the mysteries. Not much is outright told to us about this mysterious pathway. However, much of the information can be inferred. What we do know though is there was an extragalactic species of aliens that would have traveled from Peridia to the main galaxy that we know, landing on the Night Sister world of Arcana. These aliens, who we will nickname Peridians, apparently made sort of some kind of connection with the Night Sisters, as it was one of the worlds of Arcan that they apparently built the safe house for their map, a map that led back to their sacred home world. According to the Night Sister Morgan Elsbeth, the place where the map was originally stored was a temple built by Night Sister hands, which would definitely imply that they were in close contact with these Peridians. Of course, we have no idea who the Peridians were or what happened to the ones that came to the main galaxy, but perhaps they ultimately decided to go back. Interestingly enough, they would still leave a star map inside of the temple, locked away behind two puzzles. Presumably, it was only the Night Sisters that had the knowledge of the secret to the puzzles and how to access the map in full. As we saw, it was Morgan's magic and her ability to use the Force in this unique way in the Night Sister magic itself on the planet of Setos that Morgan was one of the few that was able to activate the full potential of the star map. This further proving the connection to the Witches of Dathomir and the ancient Peridians was something much deeper and more special. This would explain why the Night Sisters are more inclined to believe the tales to the pathway to Peridia, because it was their order and the Peridians that actually made contact with one another first. It is far more likely that the Jedi would have caught wind of mysterious travelers that came from the outside galaxy. The Jedi may have investigated it, which led them to the Night Sisters. The Night Sisters, who notoriously guard their secrets quite fiercely, especially from the likes of Jedi and Sith. But what's important to note is that through one one way or another, the Jedi managed to learn a bit about this mysterious pathway, the pathway which the extragalactic visitors established and used to get into the main Star Wars galaxy. However, this pathway is sealed to all those who do not have a map or prior knowledge of the pathway itself. Though because they were unable to locate the pathway or get any information out of the Night Sisters, it is far more likely that the Jedi scholars returned to the temple, explaining that it was nothing but rumors and ghost stories. The Night Sisters maintaining the secrets of the extragalactic visitors. The Peridians were long gone, and the star map was nowhere to be seen. This would actually fill in the gaps as to why younglings in the temple would know about it, and conjure fairy tales and stories about it as Balin mentioned. It's possible that the situation with the Peridians happened so long ago that the Jedi decided that it wasn't worth exploring, and so they never gained any deeper knowledge about the visitors thus facilitating the pathway to Perdia's demise into mere bedtime stories with the younglings. Balin didn't seem to take the pathway to Peridia very seriously until the evidence was shown to him, and Morgan quite confidently told him that she knew Peridia was the right place since Thrawn was calling to her in dreams and visions, something that we are still unsure of as to how he accomplished. But anyway, back to Balin. Balin became very cautious about this and mentioned that the path forward in this direction was clouded, which is interesting to us since Balin was shown to be quite keen in his ability to sense the future. But the largest question remains, who are the Peridians? So let's go ahead and acknowledge the elephant in the room. Is this all setting up the Vong War, the Yuzhong Vong themselves? And the answer to this, we must look to Balin's skull. We feel the path ahead is indeed clouded. It should be mentioned that the Peridians are not the Vong, 
though the reason being that the statues carved in the temple that Ahsoka retrieved the star map from don't look anything like the Vong. And although it's possible that these are Night Sisters themselves carved within the walls of a Night Sister temple, there's also the possibility that they are Peridians. It's also clear though that the Peridians have some affinity with the Force, which the Vong are famous for not having at all, coming from a separate galaxy entirely. The Vong actually hated all things technology based and didn't only not wield the Force, but hated it as well. So that's clear that whoever made contact with the Night Sisters were certainly not the Yuzhong Vong. Though in canon, introducing a brand new galaxy is certainly telegraphing that the Vong could be out there in the near future, as the Vong in Star Wars Legends were not a species that stemmed from the unknown regions, but a separate galaxy entirely. A major difference between Star Wars canon and Legends is that in Legends, Thrawn explores the unknown regions, not a new galaxy. But now, we have the mixing of the two, a new galaxy with potentially the Vong and Thrawn being trapped there. With all of this though, we could be looking in the wrong place. Perhaps the Peridians aren't actually Galactics at all, but rather a species native to the main galaxy, a species that managed to form their way to Peridia. The technology used in the star map definitely calls to mind the kind of force-based tech that was used in the tombs of the Zepho. If you remember in Fallen Order, the Zepho were a species of force-sensitive sages that adhered to the light side of the force, eventually building elaborate tombs in which to house their knowledge since they started dying off at a rapid pace. We never learned of the ultimate fate of this FO, only that they vanished into unknown space in order to find a solution to their species problem. The only issue with this theory though, is that once again, the carvings of the Peridians that we see bear little resemblance to the Zepho if they are the Peridians. The Zepho have hammerhead shaped heads and no noses, and in their tombs and temples, statues of the Zephos are quite normally found. But what is interesting is the Peridians and the Zepho both felt a call to unknown space, only to separate parts of the galaxy. But going back to the idea of the Peridians being from a separate galaxy, and back to Night Sister magic and how this all connects, the Peridians may use an energy force or a magic that is adjacent to the force, and they were the ones who taught the original Night Sisters how to draw upon the ichor that flows through Dathomir in order to shape it into spells and magic power of their own. This would indeed make a lot of sense as to why the Night Sisters seem to operate so differently from the Jedi and Sith in terms of the way they wield the Force. What's especially shocking about this is even Darth Sidious admitted to not fully understanding how the Night Sisters' magic worked, realizing that although it tapped into the usage of the dark side, it was not the dark side as he knew it. The study of magic and being able to tap into one's environment in its direct correlation with the Peridians leads us to believe that the Night Sisters have been taught a form of force wielding that is not originally from the main galaxy at all. Perhaps the Night Sisters and the Peridians can tap into an aspect of this energy field that the Jedi and Sith cannot. In the lore, Dathomir is in fact one of the oldest planets in the known Star Wars galaxy, and one of the most sacred planets to the Night Sisters. It is how they draw upon their very power. But as we've seen with several other occasions, as well as Morgan wielding her own magic, they can still tap into it while not on Dathomir. But anyway my friends and acolytes, what are your thought on the pathway to Peridia? What do you think about this brand new galaxy? And is there a connection to the Night Sisters and how they wield their magic to these ancient aliens? As always my friends, stay tuned on the channel for more full lore breakdowns, and stay tuned for the next episode for Ahsoka. As always, be wary of unknown space, and may the force be with you.